Hi there, it's Karen Lebo with VintageDazzle.Etsy.com here with another Vintage Haul video. If you're new to my channel, welcome. And if you're an old returnee, welcome back. I do these videos where I show um, vintage items I bought from flea markets or things that my family is, they're all cleaning out their garages, things that they send me to sell. And, um, and I also do uh, well, it was weekly, but I was doing weekly vlogs where I show you just what I'm listing, what I'm selling on Etsy and eBay and other stuff that's going on in my life now. I have not been doing these vlogs much lately. I kind of slowed down, but um, I was just taking a little vacation. I'm going to get back into it. So uh, with that said, this is a haul from the flea market. And um, yeah, I'm just going to uh, get started. So let's see, I'm going to show you the coolest, coolest piece first. I just fell in love with this. This is a carved and painted bone um, froggy, surrounded by just some spectacular turquoise set in sterling silver. This is Chinese, I'm imagining. It's not marked, but. I'm pretty sure it's Chinese. And um, I paid, well, I paid $90 for it. <laughs> it's okay. Um, I got a couple things with it with for my $90. Because I had these in my hand, and I, I literally had, that was the last of my money. And so the guy said I could have these also. Um, this is a sterling silver and onyx. Pendant. It is signed. It is signed A H S, I believe. Have not looked that up yet. Obviously, very tarnished. I'll shine that up a little. It looks pretty old. I thought that was pretty. And then also this little puffy heart pendant or charm. I haven't decided whether whether I'll put that on the charm bracelet I'm assembling or just sell it as a pendant. Don't know yet. Um, let's see. Then, as usual, I bought some overpriced jewelry from, from my good buddy Alex. It's not overpriced. I know the, the price of silver has gone up and I think he generally buys his stuff by the gram and pays a certain amount for it so he has to get a certain amount so that's why his prices have gone up lately. But uh, it's been very hard finding silver. Um, so anyway, I got this pretty sterling silver fish pendant. He has a little stone eye. I, I don't know whether that's turquoise or glass. I suspect it's glass. Um, so that was 15. And I got a bunch of rings for 15 apiece. Got this one, which I'm assuming is blue topaz. Be fun if it was aquamarine though. That would be really nice. I haven't tested it. But it's got some heft to it. It's a fairly uh, small size. Yeah, that's, oof, I'm going to get it stuck on my finger. But, um, yeah, that's nice. Uh, I think it's marked, maybe it's not marked. Um, I don't see a mark on it. But he tests everything, so I know everything I buy from him is sterling. Uh, I got this pretty garnet and marcasite ring. I haven't tested the stones, but he said they were garnets, so they probably are. I didn't ask him about the blue stone. And then this beautiful amethyst and marcasite ring. Let's see. That one's marked 925. And it, it's also signed. That's nice. Um, oh, does this say? Marsala? It might be Marsala. The ring is a little, I mean, the mark is a little indistinct. This one is marked 925. That's all I see on that one. And then this one has a really strange stone. I don't know what that stone is. It, it's green. It's kind of iridescent got a few little scratches on it, but it looks like a very old ring. I just like the, 
the look of it. That's a pretty cool one. And then this one I paid a little more for. I paid 20 for this one. This is two dragons fighting over a black crystal. <laughs> I don't know whether that's a real stone of any kind or if it's glass. Could be, um, could be onyx. Ugh, dirty. Um, and this one is marked a 925. I don't see any other marks on it. So uh, that's it for the rings. Then this. This is a nice old coral necklace with a pendant. Uh, the pendant is sterling with enamel. I don't know what that central stone is. Um, that might just be uh, painted. Hmm, I don't know. Very interesting looking. Um, there are no, no marks. It looks old. Anyway, oops. So I paid 25 for that one. Um, that's all the jewelry I got. But my next haul video is going to be a big uh, costume jewelry haul, like a mid-century costume jewelry, rhinestones and whatnot, that I got off eBay that I paid way too much for. I, I about fainted when I started kind of toting up what I was going to be able to sell this stuff for and thought, my gosh, I hope I break even. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. Sometimes I just am insane. But anyway, I just love this piece. This has got to be an antique, probably a Dwardian hairpin. And the blue that you see, I believe, is butterfly wings. And probably it used to be blue all over. And it's worn. But, I don't know, I kind of like the way it looks. It has a really kind of shabby, chic look to it. Uh, I don't know, that stone in the middle I think is just glass. And there's no marks on it, but isn't that cute? I paid 10 for that. It's really a lot. And then this, I guess I was on a hairpin kick, because this is... A, well, it's being used as a hairpin case. It might actually be a needle case. But look how sweet that is. That's got to be pretty old. Um, obviously, it's distressed. I'm going to have to do some work on it. It needs some stones replaced. It needs to be cleaned and shined up a little bit. But I just thought that was kind of unusual and fun. and I don't know. And that was also $10. Ay, ay. Sometimes I worry about myself. Mmm. Sorry, I always slurp my coffee. It's rude. Um, okay, let's move on to some other stuff. We have a brass. This is a big, heavy, solid brass shoehorn with a horsey on it and a little leather tie. And I paid $6 for him. I've had pretty good luck selling shoehorns before. They, re they make nice gifts for men, you know. It's hard to buy gifts for men, and especially um, if you have an older man in your life who has trouble reaching his shoes. Shoehorns are really useful for that. Now this... Oh dear. Glass is falling out. <laughs> This is, pretty sure this is a genuine Art Nouveau picture frame. It's, um, I think it's brass. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's brass. And there's the back, which is distressed, but not overly. At least it's got a, an easel back this time. I don't have to build one. Um... Uh, I don't think this is marked anywhere. I didn't find any marks on it, I don't think. But I paid um, 10 for that. Um, now 
this. I thought this was going to be a winner. Man. But it's really not. So this is a men's travel grooming kit. And it's top grain cowhide. And it has all these chrome boxes and things to put soap and toothbrush and there's a brush and there's a comb and a and another shoehorn and uh, tweezers and a mirror Oops. and I paid as you can see I paid five dollars for that and I thought oh that's really good but these don't sell for very much I guess I guess they're just not very practical I guess men don't travel with this kind of thing I was thinking maybe you know, hipsters might like this sort of thing. It's got a bottle for your cologne or your toner or whatever. And, you know, women could use this too. It's, it doesn't have to be a man. It's very unadorned. But it's in really good condition. It's missing one thing. There's one little slot that's empty. And I think that was probably a nail file. So that would be easy to replace. The mirror needs cleaning. Anything on the back of the mirror? I didn't check that. Let's see. Oh, cute. Look. It has a little easel back. Oh, that's so cute. Looks like it's never been used. Um, yeah, I, it, this appears to be fairly gently used. I, don't, I looked at the brush. The hairbrush didn't have any like hair in it or anything gross like that. So, yeah, I don't know how much I'm going to ask for that. I just thought it was nice. Oh, and it's, um, there's some marks on some of the things that say Germany, not West Germany. So, I think this was made pre-World War II, so that's pretty cool. Um, okay, so this is fun. This is uh, one of these um, Italy boxes. And as you can see, it is a little bit distressed. Some of the paints worn off the flowers, but I thought it had a neat look to it, and it was two dollars. And I thought, well, these well these boxes usually sell pretty well, even in, even in distressed condition. So I'll pay two dollars for it. And I I kind of I glanced inside it, and I saw I saw that it had this, and then I kind of forgot, and I. I just, I handed it to the lady to, because she was packaging my purchases, and I just forgot that there was anything in it, and she didn't notice or didn't care, but when I got home, there was all, ah, there was also a dollar coin, so this box actually cost me a dollar, and I got a free thingy, it's made from a bottle cap, and um, that'll be fun to use for my my artwork. And then sitting next to it was this other tiny little box. This is from India. I've never seen one this small though. And it was a dollar, so I got it too. Look how cute that is. And it's in really good condition. Okay, so then we have this teapot, which I don't know if it's pewter or silver plate. It, it has like a really worn off label that you can't read on the bottom. I think it might be pewter. But anyway, obviously it needs, it's in desperate need of cleaning. It's got, it's all kind of scuzzy. And it's pretty scuzzy inside. I don't know that I would use this to actually serve any liquid for drinking in. I think it's just more of a display piece. But the handle appears to be horn, and the finial also is made from horn. So, it's kind of cool. No idea on the age or anything. But I paid $8 for that. I thought that was really cool. And then uh, we have a picture frame, another picture frame. This one is sterling silver. And I paid 20 for this, but it's a pretty, pretty large sterling silver frame, I mean, you know, and it's in really good condition. Usually these backs are all scuzzy, but this one's pretty clean. Um, I guess 
the uh, ribbon is disconnected here, but I think I can just, there's a little slot that it fits into, and I think I can just kind of glue it in place. Maybe pin it. But anyway, it's pretty. And I got these clip-on sunglasses. Very uh, steampunk looking in their own little leather case. The case actually looks like it might be something besides cowhide, unless it's just impressed to make it look like, looks like ostrich hide. But I don't know. Um, let's see if it snaps anything now. But this says American Calobar sunglasses, something like that. But they were only $2. That's a really good price for old glasses of any kind. And these are in such nice condition. The case is a bit worn, but it's not coming apart or anything. It's just the suede leather is kind of kind of worn. But cool. I really like it. Uh, we have a couple of purses. This one I just thought was so sweet and kind of unusual. I really I haven't seen a lot like this. I'm not sure on the age. I think it's possible that the handle is Bakelite. I haven't tested it. I don't know. It might or might not be. But it's lined. And this... Oh, where'd my little thing go? Where'd my little clippy go? There it is. So, it has this kind of clip. Like so. And it's uh, crocheted, I guess. And then it's got this little embroidery on it. So, I don't know. A mid-century, I guess. Maybe 1940s? They, they did these kind of, this kind of handle in the 60s also. But this just doesn't look 60s to me. It looks older. Don't know. I paid 15 for that. And then this. This is a really spectacular purse. Look at the needlepoint on it. I don't know if you can see the detail, but it is the tiniest, tiniest petty point. And just an incredibly beautiful pattern. The only issue is, see these stones? All along here, there's quite a few missing. They're, they're little marcasites. Um, so, the... Um, first price quoted to me on this was 25 but when I pointed out how many stones were missing, they dropped the price to 10 So I took that. It's beautifully lined, and it still has its little mirror. There are no stains or anything on the inside. There's one little mark right there. Another little mark. Just little marks. Nothing bad. So... I'll do a little, a little stone replacement. What is that? No, there's a little, um, there's a little eyelet right there. It probably had a little dangle of some kind right there. I might see if I can improvise something. Okay, now on to the more bizarre. What do you think? <laughs> I don't think this would qualify as a face mask. It doesn't fit very snugly on the face. Um, but anyway, uh, this is... Uh, I'm not sure exactly. It's Middle Eastern, um, tribal, something. It's got these metal embellishments and it's embroidered. And I bought this from a, a couple who said that they were, they lived in Iran in the 70s. And they bought these at a, like a bazaar. And that they were a little bit, they were used but not antique at the time. So I'm thinking they're probably about 1960s. Um, maybe 70s. And here's the fun part. I have three of them the second one. I've done a little bit of research on this. I haven't found any that are exactly, exactly like these. They're 
They're very unusual. Oh, I just absolutely love them. The, the lady said that she had bought these intending to um, frame them and do, you know, some kind of wall display, but she just never got around to it. Check this one out. This one's really beaded. That's what the back looks like. But, oh, I'm just, I love these. I think they're so cool. Publica. Oh, this is interesting. It's a good coin. Republica di Marino. Okay. <laughs> uh, this says the same thing. Just, uh, maybe that'll help me out. I didn't see that before. Oh, there's another little coin there. Anyway, I paid $25 for the three of these, which I thought was a pretty good price. So, this, this is a coin also, but it doesn't, there's nothing in English on it. But I can, oh my goodness. This is just a cool old coin. That's one side. That's the other. That looks really old. Hmm. Hmm. That is interesting. Two of them. This one's different. Anyway, all I know for sure is Middle Eastern. I, I don't think Persian. I don't think they're from Iran. I think they're somewhere, something else. Uh, okay, and finally, my last purchase of the day was this Chinese bowl, which I just thought it was so lovely. It's got the cherry trees, it's all hand painted, and it has this mark, which I may or may not be able to identify. I have a database that has a lot of these marks, but more times than not, I can't ever find what I'm looking for. But I just, I just had to have this bowl. And I paid, I think I paid 50 for it. Talked the guy down a little bit, but wasn't able to make a lot of headway. But I, I think I'll do okay on it. It's big. Nice fruit bowl. Um, yeah. Oh, oh, and I wanted to show you one more thing. I think in my last video I told you I was going to start working on some embroidered jeans. So, I just, just started these. Got a little heart there and a little circle there. And, oh, a little, there's a little patch right there, and then I'm just working on this, this patch. I decided, I have some old uh, embroidered dishcloths that are like, have holes and rips in them so they can't really be sold, and um, I thought I'd just cut out little pieces of the embroidery and use those as patches. Um, this little heart with the flowers on it, that's an old napkin that I no longer use. So, and these are some old jeans of mine, Route 66. Um, when I get them finished, I may like them so much that I keep them. I don't know. Um, I did one patch on the knee there, and that's about it so far. Oh, I did, <laughs> I did just a little bit of stitching right there, just kind of playing around. I bought some embroidery thread off of eBay. So that is my latest project. The rug is now for sale in my other shop. My other shop is uh, uh, karenlebo.etsy.com. Okay. Yep. 
that's it. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And um, share this video with your like-minded friends. And comment. I do like comments. I read them all. I respond to them. And yeah. So I hope everybody's doing really well. And we'll see you again soon. Bye.